Today I'm going to compare the last two single-shot muzzle-loading cavalry pistols of the Austro-Hungarian monarchy. I'm going to recreate the original muzzle velocity, powder load and bullet. Until the second half of the 19th century, the pistol was mainly a cavalry weapon. The pistol has very strong ties to the Hungarian military history, as the traditional light cavalry, the hussars carried a pair on the saddle. The most important arm of the hussar was the sword, but he also carried a carbine. The hussar was able to fulfill many tasks from unexpected raids in enemy territory, reconnaissance, to pursuing the enemy. The pistol was mainly the weapon of self-defense, while the primary weapon of the attack was the sword. The tube lock pistol was adopted in 1844. The lock is a chemical ignition lock. The priming material, first calcium chlorate, then mercury fulminate, was loaded in a small brass tube. The barrel is smooth and the caliber is 17.6 mm. The paper cartridge held 60 grains of black powder, a felt wad and a 24 gram lead round ball. The diameter of the ball was 15.9 mm, so the gap between the barrel and the bullet was 0.8 mm on both sides. The powder was the same granulation as the musket powder, but only half charge compared to the infantry muskets. The Kepler Lorenz pistol was rifled, and it also had a simple safety on the lock that held the hammer away from the nipple. The charge of the cartridge was 30 grains of fine granulation black powder. The bullet is a 28 gram compression bullet designed by Josef Lorenz in 1853. The bore caliber is 13.9 mm, while the bullet is 13.7 mm. This leaves 0.1 mm gap between the bullet and the bore. The gap was filled by the greased paper tube of the cartridge. The lubrication was a mix of beeswax and tallow. Both guns are equipped with the front sight, but only the Lorenz has a rear sight as well, that is a thin notch cut into the barrel. Neither of these pistols has a ramrod channel under the barrel. The Austro-Hungarian cavalry soldier had the ramrod tied to the cartridge box sling. He used the same ramrod for the pistol and the carbine as well. Both pistols have a heavy butt cap, so the pistol was usable as a club as well in combat if there was no time to reload. According to the contemporary cavalry training instructions, the effective range of the pistol was 18 to 25 meters, so I'm going to test both guns at 21 meters. I am also going to measure the muzzle velocity of both guns to check if the 28 gram conical bullet was really more effective than the 24 gram round ball of the smoothbore tube lock Augustin pistol. The loading procedure of the tube lock pistol started with biting the end of the paper cartridge off. Then the soldier poured the powder into the bore and inserted the bullet with the paper tube into the muzzle and rammed it down with the ramrod. I prime the lock after the gun is loaded, but in the 19th century this was the first step of the process as the ignition tube was attached to the end of the cartridge. Now the gun is loaded and ready to fire. According to previous experiments with infantry muskets, I found out that the Swiss 2F powder can replace the original musket powder. Let's check the muzzle velocity of this load. Now let's check the group size at 21 meters. The first one is in the target. The recoil of the gun is very heavy. And the second is in the target as well. The bore is starting to be very dirty, as there is no lubrication on the paper. 
While loading the last shot, I had to check if the bullet is firmly on the powder. So probably the cavalry soldier was not reloading his pistol too many times during the battle. The third shot was not on the target, so let's check the fourth. And on the target again. And the fifth is on target as well. This small test confirmed that the contemporary training instruction is right. The smoothbore pistol is capable of hitting a man-sized target at this distance, but not more. The Lorenz bullet was loaded with greased paper patching. It had two deep compression grooves that helped the expansion by the gases. The pistol cartridge held half the charge as the rifle musket cartridge. Loading was quick and easy. It was not hard to ram down the cartridge even after the 20th shot that day. This group is very close to the standards we expect from a modern service pistol today. It is clear from this small experiment that the Lorenz pistol was not just only much more accurate, but it delivered double the energy of the smoothbore pistol with half the black powder charge. The smoothbore Augustin with a 24 gram round ball and 60 grains of musket powder generated 300 joules, while the Lorenz was able to reach 680 joules with only 30 grains of fine powder and a 28 gram compression bullet. This is somewhere near the modern 357 Magnum energies.